Last year, I built a modern record player console with built-in speakers and a place for minibar storage. I absolutely love it. It's still in my living room and I use it almost every day. My only complaint is I never really loved the fabric grill or cover over the speaker area. It worked really well to hide the components and let sound through, but I never really liked the look of it and the color just couldn't match the doors perfectly. It was time to upgrade to a perforated wood speaker grill. Keep watching to see how I made it happen. This video is sponsored by my friends at DAP Products. When I built the console box last year, I used red birch plywood. For the screen, I wanted to use solid wood. Luckily, my local Home Depot carries red birch that is S4S, or surfaced or flattened on all four sides. But unfortunately, it only comes in seven and one quarter inch widths. I needed a panel that was eight and one eighth inch wide, so that meant I needed to join two boards together. To help with alignment and to give the joint a little bit of extra strength, I decided to use my beadlock system from Rockler. It's basically a jig that allows you to use a drill and make holes for floating tenons. I used this system when I made my brass handle cutting boards last year. I drilled corresponding holes using a 3 8 inch bit on both edges of the boards that I wanted to laminate together. I then applied a liberal amount of carpenter's glue to the adjoining faces, as well as the mortises that I drilled with the beadlock system. If this is the first pneumatic datic video you've seen, welcome! Glad you're here! If you're liking what you see, and make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Here's a little trick when I'm doing a glue up and I'm feeling a little impatient. I add a few drops of Rapid Fuse quick drying CA glue along the joint. I then clamp the boards together just like I normally would. The Rapid Fuse cures in only 30 minutes, so the boards will be held together, and then the carpenter's glue will give me the long-term strength that I need to make sure that the boards stay together permanently. Fitting the boards together was kind of a tight fit, but that beadlock system helped to make sure that my top faces were gonna be perfectly aligned. A few hours later, I took the panel out of clamps and moved over to the table saw. Yep, that's right, to everyone who's been following me for a while, I finally got a table saw. It's pretty awesome, but I need to make some big modifications before I start using it a lot. For example, it really needs some side and outfeed support. When I ripped the board to its final width, I realized I made a mistake with my floating tenon placement. I should have left the tenons a little bit shorter, so that way they wouldn't be exposed after I cut the second board and left just a small strip. Even though it was really frustrating, I realized this edge of the board wasn't going to be visible anyways, so I moved on. The next step was cutting the board down to length on the miter saw. I didn't joint my boards before I joined them together, so although I had a tight joint, I did have a couple of areas where there was some slight gapping. I spread a little bit of DAP Plastic Wood X wood filler over any imperfections that I could see. This stuff is awesome because it's pink when it's wet, and as soon as it turns tan, you know it's dry and ready to sand. I gave the board a quick sand and then moved on to the layout of the holes. I used a pencil and a square to create a grid so the holes would be spaced one inch on center. I actually created a 3D model so I could visualize how the grid would look on the board before I started making any marks. And I've actually included an image of that diagram on my blog, so if you're curious, there's a link in the description box. Next, I began the very tedious work of drilling all the holes. I intentionally didn't count the number because I didn't want to feel overwhelmed, but let me tell you, there were hundreds and hundreds of them. This would have been a really great project to have a drill press on, but luckily, these holes didn't have to be completely perfectly straight, so drilling them by hand using a 3 8 inch Forstner bit was just fine. After that, I moved on to sanding. The Forstner bit left me with very clean holes, but I did have a couple of spots where I had a little bit of chip out. I fixed those with a little bit more plastic wood X and sanded those specific holes by hand. To blow all the dust out of the holes, I used my little Ryobi power inflator. I love this thing. I got it a couple of years ago and it's meant to blow up air mattresses and stuff, but honestly, I use it all the time to clean off my bench and anything else that's covered in sawdust. Next, I moved on to finishing. I started by brushing on a coat of pre-stain conditioner. I usually prefer to apply either the conditioner or stain with a rag, but because of all the holes in this, I thought a brush would do a better job of getting into all the nooks and crannies. I applied one coat of dark walnut stain from Verathane. Whenever I'm staining wood, I always do it in a multi-step process. 
Once the stain was dry, I moved on to a toner. I actually have a really old video showing you how to make a wood toner at home, but lately I've loved the convenience of an aerosol toner that I get from Mohawk Consumer Products. I recently talked all about toners over on my Instagram channel and why you need one, but basically a toner is kind of like a tinted top coat. It goes over your stained surface and it helps to even out the highs and lows and make your finish look a lot more professional. I applied two coats of toner and then three coats of clear lacquer to protect it. I removed the old fabric wrap speaker screen to make way for the new wood grill. Luckily, the grill was a nice tight fit, but just to help hold it in place, I drove a few one inch 23 gauge brads. I closed up the console and that was it. I was ready to test it out. My biggest concern was how the solid wood grill would affect the sound coming from the speakers. So my absolute honest opinion about the sound is, it's about 90% as good as it was with the fabric cover. I wish I would have made the holes a little bit bigger and I think that would have improved the sound. However, it still sounds really good to me and I'm happy with the way it looks. If you want to see the original console mini bar build, check out this video. And while you're at it, check out this one as well. Remember to hit the bell so you are always notified with every new project. Thanks for watching guys.